In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make a custom tundra biome in World Painter. Now, if you're new to the channel at all, we do a lot of time lapses and tutorials just like this one. So make sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, guys, if you're new to World Painter, I'll leave a link in the description to my full World Painter playlist. Also, if you're interested in more World Painter biome tutorials, I'll leave a link in the card above as well as in the description to the playlist. Anyway, guys, let's get into World Painter. All right, guys, so here we are in World Painter. So we're not going to be doing any sort of terrain changes or anything like that. Um, I have got tutorials for that if you're interested. Uh, so what I've done is I've created a very basic little island. I say basic little island. Um, it's an island with some some kind of like beaches, some some slopes. Uh, and some mountains and I've also used the river layer. Um, I've got tutorials to do all of that uh, Has got some cliffs, but they're like they're pretty small cliffs on this one um, Yeah, I've got tutorials to do that already on the channel and that is in my world painter Playlist which I'll link uh, in the description if you guys are interested in that Instead, this is purely on bait basically making a custom Biome instead. Sorry, it's really laggy now. So I've zoomed out a little bit too much I do you find that especially with recording it lags, but yeah, so that's what we're gonna be doing so for it, what we're going to need, uh, we're actually going to need to do a couple custom terrains. Um, so I'll go through all the ones that you need, even if you haven't done my tutorials before and you've got your own area that you want to do. Um, so one that I've called gravel, <laughs> nice and simple. It's on the complex tab. It's using the material of gravel and that is a count of 10 and andesite with a count of one. So set up a material called gravel if you haven't already got one. Uh, I use this all the time. I quite like it as a slightly variated gravel texture it just it just breaks it up with a tiny bit of andesite in there it makes it feel less repetitive um, so that's number one the next material we're going to need is actually a dirt i have call it dirt dash tundra um, you can call it the same if you want to i've actually got and i'll link in the in the description as well um, this which has got all the settings for creating the biome using what i've come up with for it uh, and all of these have got these specific names with it. So we've got like the gravel is called gravel, dirt, gravel, normal, dirt, tundra. I've tried to categorize them a little bit, um, but it's still not, still not perfect. But for your dirt tundra, it's again on complex on the noise setting. And with coarse dirt, you're going to want five. Grass block, you're going to want 15. Brown terracotta is five. Podzol is 22. And brown concrete is one so with the brown terracotta and brown concrete both of these are mixed in in order to give it a bit of a dark muddy kind of look with it uh, the podzol obviously is already quite a grassy mossy kind of looking block so that kind of works as well as the grass block as well looks quite nice especially when we apply the bad lines bad lands biome to it so when we do that it looks quite yellowy color as well so it mixes in with the podzol so it kind of gives you a bit of a clearer looking one so that's the other texture. Uh, make sure if you guys do need to pause the video, pause it, set these up. Um, you know, you know, feel free to do that. It's um, what I'd recommend doing. Another one we're actually going to be doing white rock for this, so mount, mountain rock, which is actually white. Um, I've previously shown you how to do greys rather than whites or any sort of black rock or anything like that or darker materials. Um, this I think just looks really good. When I was playing around with making this biome, the white rock looks looked the best by far. Um, I don't know why it just does. So for this one, I've called it rock dash mountain white in brackets because uh, I've got rock dash mountain like gray and light gray and black and things like that. So I've, I've kind of categorized them in that way. Um, so with this, we've got diorite and that's that makes up 100. So the majority of it is diorite. We've also got smooth quartz, which is 30. White concrete, which is 10. White concrete powder, which is 20. And mossy stop cobbles mossy stubblestone mossy cobblestone which is one so it's just got a tiny little bit of mossy rock in there um, and we'll see that with some of the rock layers as well I put mossy cobblestone in there uh, and it just adds that kind of look of having a bit of moss and a bit of a darker gray in there which you it kind of breaks it up it just breaks up it looks good and it mixes better with the gravel layers that we've already got so there we go that's those settings for that one we've also got another one which is Dirt Gravel Normal. So in my previous tutorials, I've used this Dirt Gravel, <laughs> wherever it is, Dirt Gravel, um, which I've kind of called it Dirt Gravel. I've now called it green because it's got green concrete powder in it. Um, with the this biome in particular, green concrete powder looks really weird. <laughs> it does not work at all because it's so green and of course it doesn't get colored by biomes because it's, it's just an normal block. 
it doesn't look right. So um, all I've done is I've taken that layer and I've removed the green concrete powder. So for coarse dirt, you've got five. Gravel, you've got three. Grass block, you've got 15. And then brown concrete powder, you've got one. So the brown concrete powder is still in there and that really works quite well. So there we go. Those are your custom terrain layers. For the custom layers, we do have a couple. I've actually built three new custom layers. Actually, I just remembered, I haven't even told you guys how to make one of these if you haven't done it before. If you haven't done it before, click on terrain, do on custom here, do create custom material. I'm just gonna call it, yeah, call it dirt, there we go. And it'll create this custom tab, and it'll move it down to the bottom. So that's where you can do it from there. I'm just gonna remove that one. Yes, I don't want dirt. Um, there we go, just like that. So then you can then just create it from here and do create custom material or select uh, import from file or other worlds, all of that's in there. With the custom layers, on the layers tab, you click on here and we've got custom object layers and we've also got custom plants layer. Uh, we're actually gonna do the, I believe we do the plants layer first, but either way, when you click one of these, it'll create the custom tab. Yeah, we're gonna do the plants. So click on that, do create custom plants layer. And this one, it'll take a little while to load, um, but we're using lots of the nice plants that we've got. So I've got it plant-tundra. And for the settings on this one, we've got grass with 10, tall grass with one, fern with three, large fern with one, and dead shrub with three. And we've also got, and this is one of the most important bits of it, and this is what gives it its really good look, is the sweet berry bush. Without that, it's kind of quite colorless. <laughs> uh, so the little bit of red berries that come through on these, and also the slightly off green color, and you'll see it when we load it and into the world really really works with the tundra biome so sweet berry bush i've got two on that um with the growth from one to four because why not and that is it for your kind of layer you can i've given mine a uh it's weird isn't it look I've got the color down there is red but it's up here it's yellow yeah figure that one out <laughs> no idea so i don't know why that's a different color but apparently it looks red there but it's not um the next one, what we're going to need is some custom objects. So what I've done is in the uh, description again, guys, the MCG schematic pack, I've updated it with a couple extra um, rocks and things like that. So there's, I've just done an update to add in exactly what we need for this tutorial at the minute and, and maybe added in a couple extras. Um, from that, it's just a zip file. What you'll do is you will download that, obviously. Uh, onto your PC, you'll then unzip it, and all you need to do, if you haven't done it before, uh, for me, I'll grab this onto the screen in just a sec. There we go. So all I've done is I've got on my D drive, World Painter Projects, Schems, um, and then in here you'll get the zip file, unzip that, and you'll get a big folder called Schematic. Um, and that should have everything that you need. Um, there's, there's quite a lot in there. If you want some trees, uh, some rocks, it's mostly trees to be fair, it's a lot of the kind of... Um, uh, coniferous trees is, is the majority of those but what you'll find in there is diorite rocks so all you need to do is you need to click on plus and you go and grab all of those r underscore diorite rock from l01 to l02 and there's four small ones um, there might be more at the time when you're watching this video might expand it uh, we might not have expanded it who knows um, but yeah these are the ones that i've used it's up to you play around with different rock variations, add your own if you want to and just make them as schematics in World Edit and you can then load them into World Painter as well. So through each of these, once you've loaded those in, what you'll have is you'll have to offset them manually because um, at the minute I can't do BO2s or BO3s which, which basically do this automatically in World Painter. Um, I've been looking, I can't find it. It'd be great if I could because it makes my life a lot easier as well as your life a lot easier. For the time being, we're just gonna have to go through them and I'll tell you what, what to do manually. So with the Diorite Rock LO1, you need to do this on minus three on the vertical axis, the Y axis. So that's what that one is. Um, with LO2, it's again minus three on the Y axis. These are the two very, very big rocks. With SO1, it's minus two. SO2 is minus two. I see a little pattern going on here. <laughs> SO3 is minus two. And SO4 is minus two. So there you go, nice and easy really. Um, what I've also done is sparseness is at 80, just in case you want to match that. I've got it rock dash white uh, for my custom object layer, and I've given it a, like a greyish color. It doesn't really matter what color you give it. 
Next one we, we've got is some tundra forest. So tun, tundra doesn't usually have any forests, but because we're in Minecraft and because it looks pretty cool with the Badlands uh, biome colouring of the leaves, I've added in a couple of trees. There is there are some trees in the tundra. Um, obviously, you've got like border regions where you could have some trees. There's no real reason why you couldn't have a couple. It's just that um, it's a pretty hospitable kind of climate, basically. Uh, most of the time, it's actually covered in snow. We're actually doing, obviously, a, a non-snowed version. Uh, so for the, the four or eight weeks, I think it is, or something like that, a year that it gets enough where the, the snow melts. Um, that's the kind of one we're doing. It looks very Skyrim-esque. It looks really cool, and it's really nice as a different biome in Minecraft. So I've picked out some of the trees from the tree pack. Um, the Douglas fir, I've gone for the entire collection. So that's LO1, LO2, LO3, LO4, SO1 to 4. EU larch, LO1, LO2. EU larch, SO1 to SO2. So just in case you don't know, S means small, L means large. Nice and simple. Uh, lodgepole is LO1, SO1 and SO2. So these are all ones because uh, so spruce leaves don't get coloured by biomes, but pretty much all the other leaves do. So a lot of these have got like oak leaves on them because that fit the, the kind of colour initially. So these now go like a brownish, orangey, yellowy colour with Badlands biome and it, it looks really cool. We're going to have a really sparse forest. So for each of these, I'm going to have to go through, unfortunately, because again, no BO2s or anything like that, but for Douglas fir, LO1, minus 3. Douglas fir, LO2 is minus 3 as well. Douglas fir, LO3 is minus 3. Douglas, Douglas fir, minus 4 is minus 5. This one's huge, but it looks awesome in this biome. I love it in this biome. Uh, I didn't like it before. I built it and spent like a hour making the tree and I, I didn't use it. <laughs> Typical, but I've used it in this biome and I really like the look of it. It looks great. Uh, Douglas fir, SO1, minus 1. Uh, SO2 is minus 1. Douglas fir, SO3 is minus 2. Douglas fir, SO4 is minus 1. EU larch, LO1 is minus 2. EU larch, LO2 is minus 3. EU larch, SO1 is minus 1. EU Larch SO2 is minus 1. Lodgepole LO1 is minus 2. Lodgepole SO1 is 0. So there's nothing need to do with that one. And Lodgepole SO2 is minus 1. I think at some point, and I think it's probably going to be quite useful, and you guys are going to be asking for it in the comments, is can you add these to a spreadsheet? And I will. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll expand the spreadsheet that I've got here. I'll add an extra tab on it uh, so that you guys can actually see those. I think I'll just do that because that's going to be a lot easier, especially for me because I have to then, uh, I usually render them out and then go from there. So anyway, we've got all these objects now. We've got all the layers. We're now ready to do it. So what do we actually need to do to get this done? So what I've got is the order, uh, what textures we need to do and what we need to apply. Um, and again, I'll link this in the in the description so that you guys can go and grab it and you know It'll be quite good. I can expand things and I'll, I'll add biomes onto it as we as and when we kind of like need to So first things first what we're gonna do is go on to the pencil tool We're gonna go on to our custom terrain. So actually actually we can do something um, that I haven't shown you guys because because of the way that feathering works. Let's go on to selection. So we go on to edit selection Whack your intensity up to like 100 and what we're going to do is we're just going to click around the area that you want. Obviously, I'm doing it very uh, roughly around this island because because I am. Um, there we go. So something like that. Hopefully, I haven't got any. Nope, that's good. So I've got this selection in here. What this means is we can actually go into Edit, Global Operations. And when you click this inside selection, it's only going to apply these operations to that selection. It's really, really useful. Um, so fill with terrain type, that dirt tundra that we'd made earlier. And what we're going to do is at or above 55 with feather. Now, this is where you can't do it if you paint it onto it manually. The feather doesn't work. You'd have to do it manually. But it works perfectly with global operations. So this is really good. Also, I should note that the terrain that I've got here has been defaulted all the way back to sand. So there's just sand underneath it. There's nothing else at all. That's all it is. So we just click on go for that. It will quickly go whip through and we'll get a nice feathered effect around the um, like 54 block so we did it at 55 we'll get it around like 54 I think it goes down to 53 or 52 or something it goes down a couple blocks but it, it gets lighter and lighter it's really cool 
Next Gullible operation, we're going to do another fill with terrain type. Also, make sure you click inside selection. I've done that a couple of times where I've not clicked that and um, tried to paint the whole map the same thing. I did not want to do that. We're going to go with dirt, gravel, normal. This is going to be at or above 75. And again, it's on that spreadsheet, um, but you can always have a look there. We're also going to do above 25 degrees. That's the other bit. Click on go. I'll go off there. Uh, we're going to do another global operation. Straight away, click on inside selection, because I think that's probably a good thing to get used to doing. And we're going to grab that gravel. So we've got that gravel mix that we had before. This is going to be above 40 degrees. No at or above or anything like that, just above 40 degrees. So click on that. Next one. Inside selection, fill with terrain type. This is going to be our white rocky mountain. And this one's going to be above 45 degrees. So we haven't got any sort of cliff layer for this biome, for this this one. I've just been really liking the white kind of colour. I did think about doing a cliff for it, but then it, I don't know. It just doesn't look quite right with the way that I've set this island up. Um, so I'd end up kind of overwriting it in areas and it becomes a real pain when you start doing that. But fill with train type rock, mountain white. I never knew why this moves around when you move around, but it's very cool. Uh, inside selection above 45 degrees. So it means that we've then got um, gravel, that kind of grey gravel at 40 degrees all the way to basically 44. And then 45 degrees and above is all this white rock. And it gives us a nice, really nice look actually. It looks cool. So what we can now do is we can deselect this. There we go. We've now got our muddy looking rock. <laughs> muddy looking island with some nice uh, white on there. Going to move on to layers now. So the next lot is layers. So onto our layer tab here. Click on the pencil. We will do the... Let's do the forest tundra layer first. Should we do that? Mm, nah, we're going to... Yeah, we'll get where we can do actually. Yeah, we'll do the forest tundra layer. Why not? Um, I'm going to go with a really soft brush on this. And what I want is at or below 170. I didn't want them that high. It just didn't make any sense to me. And also below 20 degrees. And only on land as well. So really important. And we're actually going to put the intensity down to 30. There we go. 30 there. Now I don't know actually if I did any changes. I did. Okay, so on the layer as well. Sparseness, one object per 50 blocks is what I've gone for. So I did change that setting. I didn't say that. Sorry, guys. So what I'm going to do for this one is have a really soft brush. I've got it on. Um, I've obviously not got it on 30, but it's close enough. There we go. Ah, 29 will do for now. Um, I'm just going to do it around these kind of areas here. I'm not going to do it in like loads. So I've just got like a little bit of forest in here. This will look quite cool with that river, actually. There we go. Something like that will do. So I'm just going to have a tiny little bit just to show you guys what... It looks like in either way, and this is probably what I'm going to end up doing on, on this island, in, in fact. I think it'll look really good. So the next thing we'll do is the rock layer. So rock layer is going to be at or below 170, so we don't need to change anything on that. Uh, we've got below 15 degrees, so the reason being, otherwise the rock sticks out in, in weird places, it looks strange. And we're going to knock the intensity down 10% and have this pretty much solid. So this is going to be across the entire entirety of the biome. So I'm just literally going to paint it everywhere and on this upper bit as well. So let's just add in some nice rocks that are just jutting out of the ground. And I think it looks really quite cool. So and from some of the pictures that I've seen that I've been inspired by, I could see these nice white rocks sticking out. Um, so of course, it's quite cool. Right, next one is the plant tundra layer. So this one is going to be at or above 55. Not out or below, no one. Out or above 55. Um, and what we'll do is we'll do only on terrain, custom, dirt tundra. And it's not going to be below anything, no. They're not below anything, 100% on the intensity. So out or above 55, only on dirt tundra. Paint this everywhere. There you go. So this will give us some nice coverage you can turn it down if you don't like the intensity of 100 turn it down um i i really like it for this one i wanted a really grassy kind of looking um biome so that's why i went with this same settings we're just going to change the only on to terrain oops terrain <laughs> custom and then we're going to switch this to the dirt gravel normal layer because of course as you can see we've got this dirt gravel 
uh, layers going around and we haven't filled those in. So otherwise you just get this sudden cutoff where you just get like bits of grass blocks that don't have anything on them and it looks really weird. So um, at least this way, because we've got a mix between dirt and gravel, you end up with just the grass blocks having plants on them and that looks good. It actually looks like it fades out um, quite naturally. It's, it's interesting. Um, actually also thinking about it, what we can do on this and I'll update my settings. Dirt Tundra, I'm actually not gonna do out or above because of this bit that's been faded in, otherwise we're not gonna have any on the beaches. So I just saw that quickly in the corner of my eye. I will update that so that, that doesn't say any of that. So out or above will be gone from now, now on from that because we're just gonna be doing it on that custom place where we've done it. Right, so biome now, you'll be glad. Um, so on the biomes tab, you wanna click onto uh, Badlands, click on the pencil tool, and this is nice and easy. It's only on Dirt Tundra, 100%, whack it in. So we're gonna whack this in, full blast, only on this. Like that, there we go, get all of that. And the other layer we need to make sure we capture is only on Terrain, custom, Terrain, custom. And then where is it? the dirt gravel normal as well. If you don't do this, it looks, again, you get these weird, because um, the color changes. Um, if you've got a tree going over it or you've got grass on anything, it then starts to go green and it looks really weird having this like green layer above everything. So I'm just making sure I've got everything because I have a tendency to miss it. And if you do need to get a bit more clarity because you've got too many layers on, uh, just switch them off. Uh, and then when you zoom in, you can then see it a little bit better. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, I. I don't think I can tell at all what's going on. Um, there we go, that's it for that. Um, you can do obviously more biome painting on, for example, the sand. You might wanna uh, say like only on, where is it, layer, terrain, 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 sand. You might wanna actually do a biome of beach. Is that beach or is that desert? That's beach, there we go. So you might wanna do, whoops, that perhaps, and that or above, was it 50? Yeah, I've got 50 for mine. Yeah, I mean, however you've set it up. But you might want to do that for those. I usually do. Um, personally, I would end up doing that because I have my beach all at the same level. Um, I would end up doing that as part of a global operation instead, just to, to finalize that up, probably as a first layer and then do a second layer on uh, my anything that I manually do on top of that. But you can do that. Same with the mountains as well. These ones, um, they actually switch to auto biome snowy tundra, which I think is pretty cool. Um, same with the frost layers. I know I've done some stuff on frost layers before, but if you did want to put your own frost layers on, oh, why is that changed to? It's gone a bit weird. Oh, it's fine. It's just deloaded. Seeing what's gone on, it's changed. It's like half my own thing. Um, but yeah, if you did want to put your frost layers on, I've got a video on that, so I won't go through that in this one. I'm actually not doing frost layers on this. I, I will do, but um, I won't do it for this export. So then finally, guys, go on to file, export. Export as a new Minecraft map, select your tiles. I think I've already got mine already selected because I, yep, I was testing this out beforehand. I'm just gonna cut down a little bit on, on what I'm exporting. Um, set your spawn point as well. So I've got mine in the top part of the corner. I'll export this out and I will show you what it looks like. All right, so here we are in the rendered kind of world. So I'll talk through a couple of the different things or what I was trying to go for with the terrain in general. You can see the effect of the kind of yellowing of the grass, um, the brown, browning, yellowing of the grass, it's kind of browny yellow kind of color, tint. Um, yeah, really nice kind of browns, brown colors going in on the whole thing. The rocks, as you can see, look quite interesting. I think they do, and they're not overpowering. There's not too many of them around for it to be a little bit too much, but you can kind of, yeah, see that they kind of just like jut out, as well as the bits of mossy rock on them. Um, for the gravelly mountain, I might actually go over onto this area. Here we go. So for these kind of areas, you can see the white rock um, and how that kind of looks against uh, this terrain. I just, I really like the look of it. I think it looks uh, fantastic. I love it. Um, and you can also see the little bits of gray that come in with the um, with the gravel and how that kind of mixes in because it's such, so kind of like, uh, there, there's so little of it. Um, it doesn't kind of affect the white, I find. So I was playing around with that for ages before I actually settled on the, on the, centuries of it but there you go those are the nice white mountains that we've got and then here's our trees as well you can see that one there it's got a little bit of green in it because of where it's ended up 
setting. Um, <laughs> massive tree, really high up. And then over here, we've got the, the smaller trees. Um, so these were purely picked, these trees by the way, guys. Purely picked because of the leaves rather than actually any sort of natural thing. I know that's bad. I should have gone like with what would actually potentially appear in these biomes. But um, yeah, I went with the colour and also just we're trying to get a bit of variation like these gigantic Douglas Douglas firs. Um, but I love the look of these. The leaf, leaf colour looks really good. It makes it really interesting and different. Um, yeah, it looks really good with the rivers as well. So, you know, whack your rivers in. They'll make it look a lot more natural. Although I'm not really too sure how much water actually flows because a lot of it is permafrost underneath it. So I think it gets quite boggy, in fact, in, in tundra type biomes instead. Um, so yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. I'm really happy with how this biome turned out. Also, guys, if you're happy with it um, or if you've made any tweaks to it as well, I mean, you know, if there is anything that you guys think can do to make it look better that would be awesome as well let me know in the comments section below uh, or you can also message me on twitter as well so send me a tweet with any pictures that you've made using this biome and also let me know what you want for more biome tutorials if this is something that you'd like me to go over uh, it's something i definitely have been enjoyed doing a specific biome and i need it for my world anyway so it kind of has a nice dual purpose um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this tutorial if you have comment like and subscribe I'll see you guys on the next one.